ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wednesday Night League of Legends. I'm your host, Buggleberry Finn, and I am joined by the illustrious, uh, the almighty, uh, Sensei Randall's ADC uh, and Seven Shepherd. How's it going? Uh, it is it is going. We got a great economy league game here tonight. Uh, the young FX daddy is here uh, in the chat, already blowing it up. He is excited to play. Clown9 is in first place, and they're playing against my Nono Square, who I believe has gone one and one every single week. It's going to be a, a good game here. Let's see if everybody can get into the lobby on time. It's still 10 minutes before this one starts, so hopefully we're not uh, rambling too much. But, you know, we will. Uh, just keep talking, man. It'll work out. Yeah, I, I, I can keep going. I can talk about anything. I can talk about anything. Give me something to talk about. I got it. I got it. Come on, chat. Come on, N7. I got it. Whatever. Well, let's see. It's Clown9 versus Nono Square. Well, I didn't see where Nono was in the uh, standings, but how do you think he's going to play out? I haven't watched too many economy games, so you're the expert here. Uh, yeah, I am the expert, probably, of, like, everything. Uh, so here's what I'm going to say. Clown9 looking really strong. I think my no-no square trying to figure it out a little bit still figuring out what comps work what don't i know they've been scrimming regularly so uh i'm a little bit worried about the the amount of contested picks both of these teams play a lot of the same champions or at least like we'll prioritize them in drafts so i think drafts will be like games can be won or lost before they kind of start kind of thing uh i know you're a big ADC man, uh, you've got a lot of famous clips here on LBLCS. You've been here since season one. Just the one, just the one. Yeah, what's your uh, <laughs> what's your take on some ADC changes that are happening recently? I know the Lucian change is big. I know Kaisa just got buffed. They changed the health for a lot of ADCs. Uh, what's the state of ADC right now, at least in your opinion? Well, plus thirty HP, uh, you can one v nine again. It's just that. It's just as simple as that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh. State of ADCs, right now, it's pretty much Varus at the top. I think Varus is the best by far, Lethality Varus, or you can just flex him in the on hit, either depending on team comp. So I think he's just absolutely busted number one by far. So yeah, Varus that's, the state, that's the state of ADC. It's Varus and then everyone else, like honestly, that's what it is. Varus is um hopefully my volume is up now, guys. If you can if it's getting any better, let me know. I did just adjust it right there. Um, the Varus pick in Executive League, so the league that uh, myself and you play in, uh, I believe is eight and zero, oh, so eight wins, zero losses in the yeah. Executive League. Funny, funny enough that I say it's OP, but I haven't played it yet. So, <laughs> and it's not been banned, I don't think. Yeah, the ability to go uh, either build is really, really nice, um, and it just fits. Let's take a. It's poke heavy, it's siege heavy, but it's also like you have your own peel. You have two spells right. that peel, basically. So there's a lot of options to go around with it. I have not seen either ADC in this game uh, play Varus yet. They might have, but I haven't seen it. Um, what do you play? Do you know? Uh, DJ Dice plays a lot of Ash MF, uh, from what I'm familiar with. Uh, and MF's still pretty good. Yeah, MF's still good. Uh, DJ Dice really good with the the... Long range ultimates. Uh, so he plays Jinx and Ash as well. He usually hits the stuns on the Ashes. He's stolen a Baron with the Jinx ult on stream before. So yeah, he's he's got a lot of long range stuff he can do. Um, Clown Nines ADC really can play pretty much every ADC, kind of like uh, you. I think there's not they're not super limited. Um, Hope we see some Kogma then. <laughs> you want to see some Kogma now? Dude, Kogma, Lulu, if they can play it, I think it's pretty busted, too. Anyways, hoping to see some spicy picks come out. Oh, I think Vlad, to be honest, is pretty boring. I mean, or champ-wise. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking more towards other lanes. So. Uh, I'm going to allow this giant swear uh, right at his own teammate. Lil Wayne apparently is not actually playing tonight. Uh, and they're switching up who is where on the map. So they have Utsi, who's normally their support in the ADC position. Uh, it's Lil Wanks. Little Wayneck? Little is it Lil Wayneck or is it Lil Wayne IK? I don't know what it is. Uh, he's got his wife's birthday apparently. So guys, write that down. 
Write down Ooh. that uh, June 3rd is his wife's birthday. Lil Wayne. All right, I got it's it. Right, uh, roster swap? Is that what you're saying? Uh, they're just bringing in a sub for the top lane. Uh, DJ Nola has played before for them. It's just not their normal ADC. Uh, it might change how they draft. I don't think it'll change too much. Uh, Utsi's a really good player. I think you'll see their their ADC basically trying to help ward a lot. Uh, Utsi, I think, is like second in the league for warding just overall in basically every category. Another friend. Thanks so much for following, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, the... The big synergies out of Clown9, though, are really that someone you don't know and way too large have a lot of synergy together. Um, so hopefully the rest of DJ Dice's No-No Square gets in here soon and we can start to see some uh, some some movement in this lobby as we... Uh, the Secret Asian has joined. DJ Dice has joined. Just waiting on one more as we transition over to the waiting screen. We can all wait together. One thing I did notice from economy games that they're all pretty bloody. I don't watch that economy that closely, but every time I tune into an economy game, it's always like some insane number of kills. But hopefully we get a cool game tonight. My no no square, I think, is yet to not go a kill a minute. Uh like total throughout the game, like their kills and the enemy team kills combined. So I'm expecting a bloody game. Clown nine also I know one game they had against Silver Drillers, I think it was 20 minutes long, and they won 30 kills to 3 kills. So, really bloody stuff. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of a lot of early gank from both FX Daddy and from Way Too Large. Um, they're double-checking the order right now before they go into the draft. We're going to see if it is an online draft or not. Just hanging out. Hanging out in lobby here. <laughs> Maybe you should put the music back on. <laughs> should I sing? I can sing. Uh, guys, chat, give me a song to sing. I can do it, I swear. It'll be good, it'll be good. It looks like we are going to... Go uh, into this go one. Pentacute. Yeah, Good so Pentacute, uh, we learned actually instead of a 30 second cap, it's a 99 second cap. Oh, yeah. pick, <laughs> it's insane. Which is kind of uh, a little bit off of what we would like, but that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll go. Yeah, I hope they, they make they put a cap on it or something like that. Or yeah, maybe there's a different one entirely that we could use. Um, yeah, I really like the way this one's set up. I wish it wasn't always in Chinese when you first logged in, but whatever. Yeah. I just like how authentic it is. It looks like a uh, proper pick down. Uh, Uptown Girl. Yeah, uh, I could sing Uptown Girl. Do you want me to? <clears throat> I don't think you want me to. I know that you somebody suggested to sing Uptown Girl, but I, I don't really get that high pitched. Yeah, and they're talking right now in the lobby, but try to keep it to 30 seconds for each pick. If you go a yeah. couple seconds over, I think technically if you're in a lobby, like a, a tournament draft lobby uh, in league, I think you actually have 35 or 34 seconds. If like at zero, you start clicking everything, uh, yeah, it extends flexes. the length, right? So if you go a little over, it's all right. Maybe this will stop uh, all the blank picks. I know in pro draft, it's notorious you well, don't lock in too. fast enough and then you are like oh wait it was actually this right or it like, happens to us a lot you click lock and center and it like locks in wukong and you're like i didn't do that i didn't yeah, click that you one type so you have to chat. type in quick and then it gets like all hectic so this one at least locks in what you want even though it gives you extra time i wish there was at least a i wish you could do a setting too where it's like no one can go over 34 seconds um yeah i heard ls is working on it he has a website i think he uses but i think he he wants to make it a more proper pick band, kind of like this. Mm -mm. So, team's ready? I hope so. They got it ready up, so they will be getting there. There we go. There's one team is ready. We're waiting for the other team to become ready. And we're right on in. I'm expecting a lot of different... I'm going to refrain from saying anything massively changing in the first game. 
Uh, some good bands are coming out on both sides already. Uh, Garen and Yasuo, two good takeaways from the side of uh, my no-no square. Echo's a fine takeaway from way too large, and someone you don't know can flex that. The Galio band is necessary. Um, someone you don't know plays a really good one. I'm a Whale can also throw it on support. They're going to return with the Silas band, which is fine. Um, the Galio band is something I tried to not talk about because I think it's going to be highly contested or constantly banned in the series. Uh, both teams really like to play it. They're going to ban away the Amumu too. One thing I will say is that um, if you take away the Galio, you don't have to take away the Amumu always from the side of Clown 9 because that's their wombo combo they like to do. Uh, they like to hold people in place with Amumu and then have Galio come in, give the shield, uh, knock everybody up that got ulted. Yeah, a lot of big bands. I like it. I, like it. <laughs> I think Maokai is a huge pickup for Clown 9. That's 99% sure that's going in the top lane. And that's is what we that talked about. The Varus, I see. <laughs> it's the Varus, you see. I'm not sure what the win record is for Varus in economy. I'm going to go find it out. Yeah, you need to get your stats game up, Mr. Stats. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I put them all in. I don't mean, I don't always read them all. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sitting there reading what I'm putting in. I have typos is every single time I do it. Zara support or Zara mid? Could be either. That's a flex, I think. Because I don't really know what the Secret Agent 16 plays. Uh, he has not played every game. He's played two out of six games. It's like one series he played. Varus is 3-3 three and three in Economy League. So nothing like the 8-0. <laughs> yeah. Could be a Ziggs ADC. I know AP bots can be pretty popular. And we also know I that think... this is not their normal ADC. So you're right, it could be... It could also just be a flex too. I think that will go to someone you don't know on, on the Ziggs as they're climbing up into almost to 30 seconds. They will have a few couple seconds afterwards, um, but hopefully they, they lock in quickly, and they are going to lock in at a reasonable time. I think this Jarvan is what they're going to lock in. Good Wombo. They got the Jarvan ult, Malkai ult, locked on for the uh, Ziggs. Yeah, a lot of CC, and FX Daddy going to be just returned on to his infamous Zack pick. Uh, I think this pick's really, really good right now, especially in fives. Yeah, he just jumps on you, and it feels like there's nothing you could do to stop it. Being able to come in from like three screens away too is is massive in terms of you know when you're playing fives it's different than solo queue people are constantly talking about what's in vision and if you can come in from out of vision it's always just that much more beneficial in fives. Yeah, I know we can. So we have Leona Band targeting supports. Um, yeah, so what they, uh, mid I think. Lane, uh, I think Zareth's more likely to go bottom if they're going to start banning away hard engages for supports. Yeah, because that's a pretty pokey bot lane. Mm -hmm. It's pretty annoying, annoying bot lane, Varus Zareth. Yeah, the way you deal that too would be like take a Nautilus, take a you know somebody that can can actually dish out damage early on. Yeah, like Nautilus Lucian people. could actually. Or you just pick Ezreal and play it safe. True. Set taken away. There's a Nautilus ban as well. I don't know what you how you round out these comps specifically. Um, I think on the side of Cloud Nine, you just play more team fighty. Like you can continue to draft for the fives. Just don't don't pick something that's bot lane that gets murked on by the various uh, Zerath yeah. poke because that's so much. I think they didn't need to ban two tank supports because they already have Malka and Jarvan. They're pretty tanky already. If they pick another tank, I think that'd be kind of troll, personally. They're going to pick the Zed. Uh, so that is a Zera support. Yeah, which makes me also think that you actually rotate Ziggs to the bot lane here and you pick something else in the mid lane. I don't think Ziggs really likes to lane against Zed too much. Yeah, I'm not actually sure about that matchup. It, it favors Zed. It favors Zed. He also can... I mean, the one thing is, Ziggs can take towers, so if Zed is roaming prematurely or without actual wave presence or doesn't know how soon Ziggs just backed, um, he can get super punished because Ziggs can just take those towers really fast with the passive and with his W. 
uh, the bomb. I don't know what that W is called. Pantheon. Alright, so that's probably, might be a Pantheon support or Pantheon mid. Or maybe that's a Malka support. Uh, okay, so yeah, I think yeah, all right. Ziggs, Pike, Bot, Pantheon mid. Jarvan jungle, Makai top. That's what I, I think, think. I think, although you know what I'm going to say? I don't know. Here's what I'm going to say. Uh, I don't think Ziggs or Pike is jungling. Final answer. They it might, be mid, it might be mid lane Pike. I think I'm it could be mid lane sure. Pike as well. Uh, Jarvan is a super flex here because Jarvan is the one person I think you could play in every single position. Um, and it would be okay depending on who you're matched with in the bot lane. So going to see how this one goes we are going to load in and they are going to pick um in order of like who goes where so you'll pick your own champion in here so we will see uh where everybody is going to go and then we're going to ramble on for about three more minutes about these compositions and which one we like more currently i'm not sure i have to see where each uh, champion is going i think if played correctly nono square i think has the edge because if bot, if the two damage dealers bot, like play back, and then they let Zach and Nasus and kind of Zed be on the side, and they, they get engaged on in front, and they, they're safe in the back, they can just free fire from the back line. They can't really get to them if they avoid the jar of an engage. Yeah, I'm going to say that I think if you're going into this matchup and everybody's equal gold by 20 minutes, I think my no-no square has a better one. However, I think uh, yeah. Clown9, if they get any type of lead, I feel like they can really snowball it, especially if they have macro pressure with this Ziggs with Pantheon. Pantheon can oh, ult yeah. into fights. He can have, like, you can have That's a, a lockdown split. team. Yeah. So much CC. So much CC. If you catch somebody with Maokai at W, like with those point and click CCs, or with Pike, or with Jarvan, or with Pantheon point and click CC, you can just chain it, and then they're gone. So. We're going to see how it plays out, where people are going to go in each lane. Uh, I mean, just, I would prefer the comp that uh, my Nono Square has if they didn't lock in the Zed. I actually don't think I like it. I think they should have gone for a more CG. I think they should have tried to siege more. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to let everybody know who is watching, and you let, I'm going to let you know too, N7. There is a massive thunderstorm where I am right now. So if for any reason I cut out uh, and the stream stops, it's because I was struck by lightning and it's all over. Noted. It is Panthmid, and it is Jargon Jumper. Let's go. Uh, yeah, uh... Yeah, it's just gonna be interesting. It's just gonna be down to mechanics, I think, really. I mean, it's whichever good. team gets a whichever team gets a lead early, I think. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. So one thing I will say is I think the macro from the side of Clown Nine we've just seen constantly be better than everyone else they've played against. Um, THC, the Happy Canadians, did one one against my No No Square and did get two owed by Clown Nine. Um, in pretty convincing games, so I do think that Clown Nine should theoretically have the be like be the favorites in this. They're first in the league. Uh, they only had one draw, two wins. So I would favor that. I would also say that Nasus is a pretty susceptible person to gank, especially for Jarvan who likes to gank at like level two, level three a lot, possibly even return ganks. So I'm interested to see what uh, runes and summoner spells people are running in this because. Ziggs can just run something super defensive. Um, I, you could have double TP with a Pantheon alt here and Pike roaming a lot. Definitely could get early advantages yeah. for the side of Triple Cloud9. TP with Triple uh, TP. Ziggs. True. Uh, yeah, I think Cloud9 has an easier to execute comp because if Zed doesn't get ahead, like, who's the assassinate? Really? You got two, three tank, three tankyish guys. And, and then... one's really slippery, and the Pike's super slippery. Uh, Ziggs is probably the target that you're trying to, but he's going to be sitting so far back, you have to get through those guys first. Yeah, so I think it's going to be very hard for the Zed to find anything meaningful, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, it's 
especially if they're given their home rotations. Like Pantheon can just exert so much pressure, and if Nona Square isn't careful, they could just find themselves caught out of position, and they didn't even realize it just because of the range some of these guys have. Guys, it looks like the game's about to start, but you have another three whole minutes to listen to us uh, ramble on. We are going to take call-ins. If anybody is listening and watching the stream and wants to hop into community, I'll pull you on up. You can yell at us, talk to us, uh, maybe recite a poem. I know me and N7 both love poems, so if you want to do that. Yeah, if somebody can make a haiku about these two teams facing oh, off. I would love great. that. Yeah, you have three minutes. Write a haiku, get in community, and recite them to us. And if you're not in our Discord, down below, boop, 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 boop. scroll down. See that? See that link right there? Click that. That's how you get into our Discord. Guys, we're a low-budget LCS, not affiliated with Riot. Um, and this is the Economy League. So we're, we're casting games right now that are basically gold uh, and below. I think um, Zach wants it. Oh, he's got something. Yeah, come on. Wait, you ran away. <laughs> Happy Cloud Glue will come back. There he is. What am I? What am I? What am I reading? Uh, join late. Oh, you join late. You, you yeah, love you, me, you love making copy pasta. So let's oh, give us I a copy one. pasta for Clown Nine. I don't have one for Clown Nine. Can you do a haiku? Maybe. Can you do a uh, improvised haiku about these two team comps? Do you see them on the screen? Let me see. Um, copy this copy pasta in chat. Here we go. Pito, the young P.I.T., the absolute SoundCloud god himself. Yeah, he's got the sickest beats around. It even goes by Omen sometimes. If you ask me, he's much better mid lane. He doesn't int in the long lane. That is bottom. I don't know if these are on any of these teams. Pito, no, Pito is on a CEO team. Hang on. Pito is okay. on. I got this. Better mental. Better. Oh, yeah, we played against those guys. Um, Cloud9 is running their normal, like, press R. Sort of base roll comp that they always go for, where they just like to like stack the big ults. And then we got the uh, DJ Dice's team with the uh, the poke bot lane and the Zed Zach Nass's combo. It's gonna be rough for Zed. I think Pantheon's pretty good into Zed. Although I think Zed can can beat Pantheon. If you're like, I think it's the matchup that gets better for Zed. Like the longer the game goes, or the, or the better the Zed is, like the higher skill cap it is, the easier it is. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I know what okay. you're saying. Tell the ankle collector <laughs> he needs to stop talking this blasphemous stuff. Okay, anyway, back to the thing I was going to say. I joined up because I, I have a copy pasta. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Post in the chat really quick. It's a, it's, it's a classic banger. I hope Zoe wins, XD. I'm a Zoe main, and she's so fun. People get so trolled by the bubble, and her voice lines are so cute. Like when she sings about chocolate cake, LOL. She's super random, but also smarter than she looks, just like me, XD. It's my favorite. Oh, and so. with that, I have to say, uh, that's enough glue-woo for me today. <laughs> uh, thanks for calling in, though. Appreciate it. Good insight on a couple of these comps as we transition over to the in-game screen. This is the game one of a two-game series between Clown9 and my no, no Square. Clown9 still at the top of the league in economy. Are they going to be able to push their lead further as Doug Dimmodome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome, is chasing in that second-place spot? We're going to find out. from Clown9. They got to do it. You think they got to do it? I think they... They have to. I think they have to invade Pantheon, the Pantheon W, they, they have to. Maokai, I mean, if, they, if they both start Pantheon W, Maokai W, it's a free kill. Pike Q, I mean. Exactly. I think we're going to see an invade at some point. So at some part of the map. I mean, they have the better level one. I would expect them to do something with it. Um, we're going to see. I don't know if Cloud9 is big into invading this year. I know that they were... They have like two or three players from um, Naughty Boy's Economy last year. So... Some good name tag synergy, though. All of them had Cloud9. Oh, yeah, I, I just noticed that, yeah. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. There you go, guys. Right this awesome. I am in game right now. Yeah, I am just changing the uh, what I'm seeing. I'm at zero seconds still, so it'll change for me. But 
I do like that they flexed that Ziggs in the champ select and they threw it on Utsi because it would have been a pretty advantageous lane for the Zed if Ziggs was mid. As we see, no pings coming oh, out using yet. the best of Barret skin, in my opinion. Oh yeah, it's actually the skin games. We got shiny Varus. We kind of... Yeah, they could have gone with the similar colors in the bot lane. So bot synergy, D minus, but I like the skin itself. D minus. D minus. <laughs> uh, pretty standard. Everybody five point. Thirty I think this game I'm gonna do a boring meter. How bored I am. Uh, it's how Deadlock's good. bringing back an old copy pasta. What is it? Want to read it? No. No, I want to go see it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tab out though. I'm poor. I'm I'm low budget. I only have one monitor. <laughs> It doesn't need to be repeated. You probably know what it is. Is he telling me that I'm an Orn one trick? No, no, no. <laughs> DJ Dice. Getting a little risky. He's looking looking for vision. No invade, so I'm very sad. Prediction wrong. Yeah, I think Cloud9 definitely could have. I, I think it would have been very risky if... There's uh, a couple other players that were exposed. They weren't exactly defending for us. I think it could have worked. Yeah. Three pretty standard starts. Both junglers starting on their bot sides. So way too large on his red and FX daddy over there on the board. They're avoiding the ward. Or they think they're going to get poked or something walking to the tri bush. I think they don't want to risk it because they know J4 probably going to do what he does best. Try to gank this level two, but Pantheon actually pushed in Zed there. So I'm not sure if it is going to connect. We are going to flash over. He spotted out and unable to have it connect, so. No dice. DJ dice here in the bot lane, though. Yeah, just stacking up the mana flow band with his E. Oh, never mind, I started Q. Someone you don't know, just trading as aggressively as possible against Secret Asian. Uh, kind of just poke out of lane. Buff to buff, probably gonna... Full clear bot side. Yeah, I mean Jarvin's usually looks at level two gank either on like bot or mid. So he didn't he wasn't able to grab it mid. He's gonna make sure he gets his buff in case Zach had been going buff to buff and looking to steal. They also didn't actually spot him out early on, so they didn't know where Zach was to start. Actually did a misplay from DJ Dice. He started Doran's blade, was supposed to start corrupting pot was Lethality Varus is pretty mana hungry, especially when you're using all your skills. Yeah, and he is clearly Lethality Varus with the um, Arcane Comet picked up. Usually if they're going to go... Not hate that big a deal, him. but yeah. Oh, this EQ does not connect from way too large. Heart and Sword Garen is going to get chunked pretty low. You think he's going to burn his flash, and he does. There is no follow-up flash, so one flash down, and Jarvan is one of those champions where if you do hit the, the flag and drag, it is a really nice um, return gank. It's really hard to avoid without your flash. Amp, he's trying to get the guttle. Pushes him off. DJ Nola saying he can just take this Nasus out and Secret Asian trading back pretty effectively out of someone you don't know, but someone you don't know spams his abilities in the correct order to trade as effectively as possible, although he still hasn't used his E here in any fight. Hold back under tower. Naughty Nicknames is going to take a whole tower shot. Get chunked to half life. And Ziggs is running back from the bot lane. FX yeah, Daddy like spotted out. out in the mid lane. So they have info now. It's always dangerous to walk through your mid lane if you're not doing something. They know which direction you went. They know where you are. They begin to play around it. Best play fire walking up to this Malkut. I think Nasus sees how low the mana is on Maokai and isn't really a super afraid. Misses on a whale does not connect. There's gonna be some damage traded back on a DJ dice, but good for nice little advantage they built up. Yeah, I mean this is how you expect the lane to go, unless there was a gank that changed like the state of it. You're gonna see Varus go ahead pretty significantly early on uh, to poke from Zerath. So basically they're bled out of mana, in which case now you're going to see them back early as somebody you don't know goes right into Secret Asian in the mid lane. There comes the E. It's hard to trade back on him when he's doing that. And he's going to chunk out Zed from this mid lane now. Yeah, 
notice where it has decent wards set in the river, not really too deep into the enemy jungle. Whereas Clown9 has no vision anywhere, pretty much. FX Daddy is in the bot lane. He might get spotted out pretty soon. I think, I think they spotted him. Yeah, I think he's going to back. I think by going into that bush doing what Zareth did, he kind of pulled a minion with him. I think he wa no, I think FX Daddy walked out ever so slightly. Is that what happened? I think, uh, I think that's what uh -huh. happened. Well, the way they reacted in the lane made it look like he, they backed up because they saw him too, so... Yeah. Heart and Sword Gear now in an advantageous spot here in the top lane. Up Looks in CS like by a little bit. Gank bot. Possibly. They do ping it out, so they know he's there. Zach Heart is a, quite a few camps on the Jarvan. The Knight comes down. Double flash here is... The secret agent is looking to see if he can do any damage. He does get first blood onto someone you don't know, so he's 10 CS down, but he picks up the kill. A good he wasn't even level 6. There. Just an outplay. Yeah, the, the Pantheon E timer is actually really long. Uh, I would expect that he he might burn all actually to get back here. This is a huge wave to miss. Um, I'm not sure it's distance at level 1, though. Might be waiting for J4 to come on through there. J4 is still only level 4, so can't do too much. And Zed does have that ult available. He didn't have to burn it in the first blood, so it would be risky business. But he is here, trading a little bit. A nice flag and drag is going to connect, and it looks like even I'm a whale is starting to roam up. As they're doing so much damage, and I don't think he's going to be able to trade the kill onto that as they pick up a, another return kill, putting it onto someone you don't know. So one in one in the mid lane. Pretty even gold throughout. Top lane is top lane. Looks like a top Just lane. A oh, here comes Pantheon, fight, but... though. He's trying to make it a two against one, and they're going to trade a lot of damage into Heart and Sword. Garen, a good E is going to block the whole smash from Heart and Sword. As he might be able to run away, but the Q timer should be soon enough, and it does connect a spear right through his heart. And maybe the Drake, though, going over to my Nono Square, who realized that the Rome was important to try to capitalize on. I'm a whale literally. Yep. Nice pull onto Zach. Stalls for a moment. J4 is here. He could steal. He has to go now. Oh. Wow, Zig's got it because they're able to finish off that Zach. That is massive for Clown9. A great play together and a kill onto the Jarvan. Flash E away. However, way too large is caught out in the pit. He does flag and drag out on the minimap. I can see that. And let's see, he's just going to back up his. Try not to get poked down too much. Really good play for yep. Clown9 there. Yep, there's that Pantheon Roam I was talking about. If you don't respect it, if you don't know where he is and you push up like that, you're just asking to be Pantheon ulted. Yeah, and someone you don't know loves to roam. I talked about how that Galio is going to be a contested pick. Throwing him on somebody else who can roam like Pantheon is really, really big because he loves to roam. Just using his spells to clear. I think he wants to back now. Or maybe reset and look for blue or vision. Yeah, that Drake's pretty good for uh, Cloud9's yeah, nice team. Yeah, they're press our comp like Blue was talking about, so. Yeah, this, shame. This Zach is pretty handily ahead in CS. Um, did die, and the kill did go over to the Jarvan, but. Gold still even between the two of them together, so. They have the late game insurance of Nasus, who's farming decently well, trying to trade as much as he can on a DJ Nola. Not as bloody yeah. as we thought it was going to be. Not as bloody. The bot gold has swung back in Clown Knight's favor, so I don't know if it was bad back timings or what happened to that, but they do have a pretty sizable lead bot now. Yeah, Utsi has been really good about his back timings, when to back, and uh, I'm a whale actually, he's been doing a good job freezing the wave when he's gone, trying to keep it so he doesn't lose any XP or minions there. Um, where DJ Dice and Naughty Nick have actually been backing together and they've been able to crash a few waves onto them. This is now the strength of their comp, they're a little bit ahead. They have people who can roam. Pantheon ult is about to be back up. Uh, Pike can get all over the map really quickly. 
scared for them because they can't really walk into the enemy jungle at this point. The uh, collapse potential. Yeah, you need to have Zach with you somewhere with you if you're going to try doing it. Oh, the hook almost lands onto DJ Dice, but not quite as they're going to trade more damage onto him. And a ultimate is even going to come out the flash from DJ Dice to get away. And his return ult does not connect. Someone you don't know now might be getting caught out in the mid lane here. It looks like Zach is going to try to even dive, but my nice key is going to block up a lot of damage. But I think he will go down. A tower shot goes down to that secret agent. Actually goes on to every single member of my Nono Square there, but it will not get a return kill. The score goes to three and two, and my Nono Square trying to make plays where they can. Yeah, I think he flashed a little early there. I think he was just a little scared of uh, maybe Pike ulting, but I don't think he needed to flash. I think he was fine. If he was in the center of that, maybe, but he wasn't. I don't think he was taking enough damage even for Pike to capitalize on it, so. But he was just playing safe. I mean, you're playing the poke people you don't want to be engaged on. Pike bot lane. DJ Nola clearing a ward here. As both teams probably talking about what's next. It is an Ocean Drake next, uh, which would benefit both teams immensely. Uh, NASA's now falling behind in this CS game, uh, which is interesting because he really has the items to... He shouldn't be trading as much as he is, I think. If you're playing somebody like Nasus in a fives, you really need to be hard stacking. Um, just I'll as think level He's gonna go in. There's no mana on DJ Nolo, but I think he could just walk out. And he does. I mean, he's pushed all the way back, but he does just walk out. He's confident of camping on what ult him there, and that's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, Pantheon stayed in vision in mid lane the entire time, so Nasus yeah. felt comfortable walking up. But I think also that J4 was right there, like, DJ Noel was like, I'm out, don't roam, keep getting the Rick Herald. Now they have an objective. If they're able to pick up a kill right here in the mid lane, they can really turn this into a lot of gold for Pantheon and for way too large on this Jarvan. They're looking for it too. They're gonna just pop it just to get plates. As dragons coming up pretty soon, and FX Daddy goes all the way in, and I'm a whale. But Pike's a slippery champion, man. He's back out. Yeah, from Varus, it's a pro blade, vision control. Pretty nuts for him. Oh, oh, and wide. Flash from Utsi's trying to get away as far away as possible, oh. and. Way too large, locks up a lot of people, but they're unable to pick him up, and that secret agent is doing work in the back line as the bombardment of the Xerathal is going to hit FX Daddy, now going all the way in, and they are going to pick up a double kill here for the Zed. That's four and one, all of their gold onto that secret agent. Hopefully the person they're trying to get it oh, is DJ Null is now here. A oh, good flash W, that's going to be at least one kill, if not another. They're going to start taking tower shots, something they really don't want to be doing here. Pike can execute from pretty far away. Yeah, good pickups on uh, Nova Square. Yeah, this Zed is starting to get pretty big, so... Oh, a nice Ooh. hook, though. Oh, and a gorgeous oh. into the W. A nice shutdown here from Maokai. DJ Nola showing the prowess on that champion, as I think Clown9 are now going to focus on this dragon. Or a mountain drake for after this for Palm 9 is pretty, pretty good. DJ Nola doesn't think he made a mistake. He's going to go tit for tat here. He does have the Bramble Vest, so the healing is massively reduced onto the side of Heart and Sword. Oh, oh, one for one. Ugh. We're seeing him foul at Pantheon, too. So he's not really going too tank. I think that's the normal Pantheon build. I don't even know. Uh, I think it depends on what you're trying to do here. I think the way they want to play, they have like three squishy targets. Um, and I think that Pike is enough to like secure them. So I think if you just get enough burst onto them, maybe a little bit from the Pantheon, Pike can just finish them off. I think it's a fine way to play. Um, I would expect him to at some point to get like Death Dance later on in the game. 
but definitely lethality for now is way too large. He's about to make a play here in the bot lane. It doesn't connect. The flag and drag does, though, and they pull him completely out, and so much gold from the pike all is going to get onto the, here from Cloud9 as they go to 7 and 5. Same. Especially in a low mobility support like Xerath. Can't really get out. Oh. Uh, and neither can DJ Dice, but he does a great job dodging the hook here from think, my whale. Maybe, maybe if he ulted them for him, he might have got him. I think that if he tried to return damage onto Pike or Ziggs, he definitely could have with that Q down. Oh, and the return. Here comes Secret Asian going all the way in. A lot of damage onto him, and he does pick him up. Goes to 5 and 2. Almost all of the kills onto this Zed. Looking really clean. I'm a whale looking for it. He wants it. He's right next to him. Point blank, but he doesn't connect. Way to sidestep into the minions as DJ Dice is starting to do a lot of damage onto Utsi. A good use of the bomb to jump away. And now he's going to have to really put on the blue suede shoes and dance around the Xerath. Oh, a nice hook into the tower range. I'm a whale slaying DJ Dice a proper way. Something you want to see out of your support. Yeah, one thing. He's going to go for another one. No time to talk as it does connect and he even pulls him back further. I'm a whale trying to just solo him and he does. I'm a whale two Fight's levels up on naughty nicknames. That's two people dead now for the side of my no-no squares. Someone you don't know is just going to harass FX Daddy, see if he can get him away from this area here. Oh man. But that situation Damn. is right here. He does so much damage in the top lane. It looks like they're trying to gank this Nasus, but to no avail as he just walks under tower and he's pretty tanky. I don't think he can walk up like this, though, to this Maokai. Maokai is built to destroy now, so... Yeah, I have some, I have some advice for all you wannabe Varus players out there. If you're going to play Varus, use your W. It is actually an ability. So I've been watching this Varus, and he has not been using his W nearly enough. It's very, very good, and a little bit of a misplay here from that secret agent. He goes under tower. He takes a lot of damage. If this is Triumph stack, it might heal enough. It doesn't. So the pop from the ultimate is going to finish off Pantheon. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Way too large. And DJ Nola push up a little bit too deep. Oh, but here comes Pike. He's going to try to hook in this Zack. A flash from FX Dad. He's going to keep it safe. And the Pokemon DJ Dice is all he can do is he's going to start to clear this mid wave here. And naughty nicknames on the Xerath is left to his own devices there in the bot lane. Yeah, this Pike is uh, doing a great job of catching people. Really giving his team a lead. Yeah, he's roaming really, really well. Um, he's getting I think, so much gold for this ult, too. I think Ziggs needs to prioritize something uh, to keep himself a little bit more safe from this Zed. Um... Either that or it needs to basically go full into damage here. I, I'm not he sure what he get wants a to buy next. next. Yeah, I would expect the Zanya's pickup. Um, he hasn't really had to fight him too much, but seeing how much damage he's doing to somebody like this this Pantheon, who inevitably will get some more resistances, it looks like he is building into that Death's Dance already, so he will take damage over time. Keep him alive a little bit longer. Red team's turn A nice ultimate is going to catch both of them down there, but FX Daddy and that Secret Agent are already here as I'm a Whale. Can't really help way too large too much. He's going to lock him up in the same spot, and they're going to poke out and down two people. Clown9 falling a little bit behind is a good turn from someone you know keeps him alive for just a second longer as they're going to look at him to pick up the first Infernal trait. The score goes to 10 and 10. We talked about how the, the gold is even at around 20 minutes. It's super advantageous for the side of... Oh, Utsi looks like it's going to be all over. He's not able to fully get away and stays near that shadow. That's going to be an Infernal Drake picked up for my no, -no Square. Pretty back and forth here. I like it. It is... The Zed is doing work. Yeah, this Zed is putting on his carry pants. 
He said I worked on my my lats all week. Get on my back. Let's go. Lull as we see everybody kind of reset with their gold, buy their items. We see two items completed on this uh, Zed here. Maokai getting pretty tanky. He almost has finished his Thorn Mail. Uh, the Umbral Blade is finished on the Pike, so we see the clear boards pretty well. He's looking for his Yomus next. Yeah, like to still keep the duo's bot, which is interesting. I guess there's no turrets left. Nice hook onto DJ Dyson. A lot of damage is going to follow as Fear comes way too large. They pick up one kill. They're yep. looking to pick up another as I'm a whale and way too large. Chase down naughty nicknames. He should have enough self feel to get away from this one. But a nice flash Q is going to have to be responded with another flash. So summoner for a summoner here on the side of the supports as Utsi's looking to knock down this bot tower with his W soon, I think. Yeah, this bike is again just catching people up. They, they didn't even walk up that far and he's able to. Get him done. Get him killed. Might be ban worthy, actually. Yeah, I don't think they want to see it next game unless they play a very different lane. Here comes Pantheon to the top lane. They're going to chase away Heart and Sword Garen. Uh, a little, but that means a little Zed... too low. A little yeah. Too low. Zed knows he can hard shove mid look for the tower here, though. As both players are trying to roam up and stop this. Not gonna be able to stop the minions from taking it. Towers go to three to two, and here comes FX Daddy looking for a nice engage. DJ Nola playing the um, disengage champion. They're trying to get the Verisol, but I guess they weren't in range. Eleven to eleven, twenty-two minutes. Right now, it is kill a minute. So economy league staying true to what it does best, providing us with lots of action and lots of kills. As someone you don't know is two levels down on Heart and Sword Garen, but he's gonna go and try to buy time for Utsi to make his way here to the top lane. They're gonna poke him out as much as they can, and Alt is even gonna come down. The flash from Heart and Sword Garen is gonna keep him alive. It's gonna be a handshake and a walk away. It's FX Daddy spots out two with his sweeper. DJ Dice and that secret agent might be looking. For him. FX Daddy going over two walls trying to find Utsi but can't. This is going to be a fight right here as. Way too large. Oh, he is booted and booted. The pop, an extra little bit of AD going on to that secret agent after that kill there. Is, uh, the top laners are now going to do what they did all game, but this time in the bot lane. Heal and smack each other. And everybody else is smacking each other, but they're not doing a lot of healing here in the mid lane over by Raptors, fighting over some jungle camps. Trying to get vision as they set up for this next dragon, a monumental dragon. Uh, because if... I think that is... My notice for gets another one. They can really start to pull ahead with this game. A lot of them are backing. This is going to give an opportunity for Cloud9 to start warding up. Let's see. Hopefully spots out this ward. He does. Zed is someone that it gets harder and harder to carry with the later in the game it is. Because you can itemize against him pretty well. Um, we see that the Ziggs is almost done with this um, Zonia's. Uh, we see that uh, Pantheon has almost completed his Death's Dance. So once you get a couple items on these people, it is going to be harder to kill. Uh, way too large also opting for a lot of tankiness in his build. Here comes a teleport, though, from Heart and Sword Gear, and he was in the top lane. He's coming down as... That secret agent is going to poke out someone you don't know, trying to make it very hard for him to come into this fight. And 
All of a sudden, he's going all in. The flash away from someone you don't know. A good use of the E is going to block the ultimate damage, but I think that secret agent is going to finish him off. He does, but that doesn't mean the rest of his team is safe as he pipe. Oh, One, man. two, can't get the third, but I think a third will fall, and it is going to be NASA's very sword. Oh, here comes that secret agent. They're not respecting how much damage he really can do. Way too large. Can't finish him off. They do get Nasus on the back end, but Maokai sacrificed a lot. Basically free range of his back line. As here comes a triple kill Man. for the secret agent. That was the that is was the engage you wanted for Cloud Nine, but they just didn't have quite the damage. Yeah. They, like what a four man Jarvanal in the in the zigs and the pike resets. Yeah, the pike, I thought Pike was really gonna. If Pike up. had gotten another reset, I think that fight was all over. I think he just missed it on, like just missed the execute damage onto Zack. If he had just been more patient with it and held until it really like showed red, because Zack has this quick healing. If he catches his blobs, he heals like so much of his maximum health. Um, where it's hard to actually time your your true damage cutoff if it's right at the cusp. So. I we we'll watch that actually just to see. I think it's probably due to just spamming a little bit before it was ready. Um, you kind of get excited when you start seeing the resets like that. Everybody in that red life. Oh, yeah. Four-man Jarvanal. Ziggs bomb. Oh, okay. Lightning is very close to my home. If I lose connection at any point, it's because I've been struck by a giant bolt of lightning. Yeah, basically, they just got a little over eager there, and it came in and cleaned up. But Someone you don't know, almost a little bit behind on this Panther. He's going to try to ult away. He's going to get... Oh. He's going to get out of the fight with a sliver of health. It's a player that he knew to get out there. I love the Storm Razor's pickup on the side of Zed. It's pretty nasty, especially yeah. with Dust Blade. That first auto doing so much. Someone you don't know now is finished Death Dance and his top lane, he but he absolutely care. cannot stop. You need to send somebody else here to deal with him. It looks like they're going to send more than just one. They're going to send a whole squadron. As here they come, they're looking on in. They already are trading one, but I think DJ Nola picks up the shutdown goal onto the Zed. So, so far, trade Whoa. in favor of Clown 9 is they pick up a 2 for 2, but I think a more profitable 2 for 2. Nasus doing nasus things. Yeah, you're on a you're on this uh, window now for Clown 9 where, okay, Zed is going to still be really dangerous. He's still going to be a carry, but all of a sudden, Nasus has been stacking all game. He's going to get bigger and bigger. He's going to get harder and harder to deal with, tankier and tankier. Um... We are going to see how many stacks he has. I, I don't really know right now. I can't view it either. How do I view this, huh? Help me out here. He's Wait, dead. Come back. He's dead, so I can't click it. Can you click it for me when he comes up? <laughs> Hello. Hello. He has 474. That's a good is that, amount. Is that a lot? I don't know. So... Like, if you're, like, having a good game on Nasus, you have 400 by 20 minutes. If you're having to team fight a lot, which you do in fives, that number is usually set to, like, you know, like, 320 by 20 minutes, where you're sacrificing a lot of lane pressure to show up to fights. Um, right. Which he has been doing. You know, he's 3, 4, and 6. He's been showing up to fights. He's been playing the game as a team member. Um, so I think where he's at right now, definitely, like, he's significantly ahead. He, Late game, you know, give this six more minutes, you can one shot, or really two shot this, uh, this Ziggs, but they're looking for DJ Dice. They don't find him. A lot of engagement here, though, and they're kind of fully committing to this fight. As Naughty Nicknames might get cut out, the ultimate does not connect. The barrier was used, though. Hey. Naughty Nickname, just absolute Chad just standing there in front of all of them. Yeah, he was a little bit behind that wall, but wasn't really safe. Is way too large, and DJ Nola are looking to knock down this mid lane. If you do group as five here, and you don't get Zed, like Zed doesn't run over you, you can really take so much so fast here. Uh, somebody like way too large on Jarvik. Oh, but here comes FX Daddy trying to prove me wrong, and this is a big, big ultimate from Zara picking up a lot of damage. Area pick up 
two already. As Clown9 are running away for their lives. They are able to trade the Zed, though. And I'm a Whale is pretty big on this Pike. They aren't able to pick up any more, though. Down goes one. There it is. So one for four. I'm a Whale is going to just run around now and maybe look to skate back in and steal DJ Dice or maybe just clear vision. Yeah, they waste a lot of their their engage and their team fight ults. One, oh. here comes it. Oh, I thought he was going for the second one immediately. Heart and Sword Garen is taking his first inhibitor <laughs> of the game. I'm a Whale still has the cooldown for his ult, and he has oh. the. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Oh. The ult, if you want auto. He's going to pop the GA. Yeah, they waste I... a lot of their team fight ults trying to get DJ Dice there. Yeah. I'm yeah, a whale is really slippery, but he's going it, right into a big dog. Right. If they play it right, like they do there, I think the engage on Clown 9 doesn't really matter. Well, and they do pick up the shutdown goal. So there is going to be a long death timer on the side of Pike here. A pretty crucial member of this team if they want to sweep up the end of the fight. I think they might be trading objectives here. Um, they might be looking to just rush Jay down there. With DJ, guys. I think he should have went Mortal Minder. So I think both of his sums are down. And I think his thought process is they just use all those ults for me. They're 100% going to do it again. I'm going to try to make it not worth it. Yeah. That's they fair. Are, they're going to spot them out here on this Baron. Things are coming out like crazy. DJ Nolan. Nasus is backing. Spot. Probably going to TP back. I think he must have to. Back. They're just he jamming has to. in more. He has to. There's the TP there right now. Everybody's kind it's of backing high. out, but saying it's not worth it. Nasus is running they, they in. They can just get the Baron. They do pick up the Baron. So a Baron over to the side of my no no square. And all of a sudden, Cloud9 are on the absolute back foot. Oh, hoo -hoo. A nice engage here on the naughty nicknames. I think DJ Nola might be able to pick him up. But not if his team comes. Yeah, the Baron throw. They knew they had uh, vision on it, but they just tr tried to do it anyways. A bit over eager. I think they were hoping that they would just go for the dragon, right? They were like, please don't yeah. check Baron, go for dragon, get it, it won't be soul. So we're not risking like too, too much. But what they end up risking is possibly the entire game is two giant super minions are down in the bot lane and they're marching in the mid lane. They'll be Baron. on soul point after this. And Infernal soul is very, very good on Nono Squares. <laughs> Comp with the Valley Bears, he's it. They're gonna look to try to pick somebody up though. I'm a whale is caught out. He does pick up the Zerath immediately. This pike, man. Yeah, th I don't see this Pike being in game two. This guy is pretty good. Yeah, I'm scared of it. I don't want to play against it. He's also like, his team's behind, but he's making these plays. I mean, he's 11, 3, and 3. Sure, you could say like five or six of those kills is probably him just literally KSing with his ability. But it gives his team more gold. It's what you have to do. Uh, he's been really good on it. Stop. That's what I would do at least. Someone you don't know falling a little bit behind here on this Pantheon. Not really able to impact the team fights the way he needs to. Yeah, he's been. Get that bitch the lead early, and he's been, it's been hard for him ever since. Yeah, he's been playing catch up to the Zed pretty much all game. This Zed, though, is very close to full build. Like, that's the one bright side for the side of Clown 9 is Pantheon's on two full items, and Zed is almost full build. I know it doesn't sound like a bright side, but that means Zed isn't going to get much stronger. Looks like they're just going to do one for. They're looking for a little bit Actually, here in the mid lane. A nice teleport. Could be enough to help secure stuff. Engage. Trying yeah. to do what they can. They do pick up the Zed. They're looking for FX Daddy now, who's doing a great job being the front line for his giant poke composition. I'm a whale is here, though, and he can really execute from far away. They Malkai have is zoning out the damage dealers. A lot of damage on the FX Daddy, and Malkai is doing his job being a giant tank, and Nasus is doing his job in the top lane. It's FX Daddy is going to pick up one, maybe even two. DJ Nola wants one for himself. Varus just says, I Zeta. don't care about you, Zerath. I'm helping out with that. Yeah. Heart and Sword, though, picking up his second inhibitor. They're Can't marching it not. into the base. They have to. This is the end right here. 
You gotta close it out. You can't mess around. I mean, you get pulled up into this tower ring here. You get knocked in with a Q. He is going to be. Oh, 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 oh. They can just end with him. Nice ultimate's gonna spread a lot of this dry. Zach actually oh, spawned in the back line there. Oh, they uh, misplay. Oh, he just dashes just to end the game. One more Q and it's all over. Game one of the series goes to my no no square. And they prove once again that Clown 9 are mortal. Yep, they played it. They played it right. They outscaled. Just as I predicted, of course. Just as you predicted. You're so good at predictions. Maokai doing a, almost the most damage in the game. Wet noodle fight at the top lane probably inflated it I quite think, a bit. I think it did. But I, I would also say like he was going on the back line in those fights and picking up probably one or two people up per fight. We saw him basically 1v4 and still pick up a Zed in the bot lane at one point too. Like when the Zed was at peak <laughs> Zed. So I, I think you might see the adaptations of, you know, at least from the side of my no where to take away that pike, maybe take away that Maokai. Um, so we will see. That is game one as we wait for the second game lobby to... Um, through my phone? I don't think so. I don't know why my voice is weird. Is my voice weird to you? Your voice is sound, not uh... weird. Well, I mean, as weird as it normally <laughs> is. It's never... You know. yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I could turn you up a little bit maybe. That'll be a... On the stream, just for might be like a you might have like a gain issue of like not picking up all of it. Maybe. Yeah, good first game, good show from the Nono Square. Pike trying his heart, playing his heart out, trying to save the game, but it wasn't enough. It's looking at some stats here. Ooh. So I think two things. I think you're going to see a totally different draft from both teams. Um, depending on who's online, you also could see some subs coming in for the side of my Nono Square. Um, as I get invited to the lobby, I'm going to invite you in here in a second and seven. Hang on. You have to wait for one of them to, to jump up. I'm going to switch the... Um, the wording's down at the bottom to be correct. So, N7, I leave you with uh, 45 seconds where you have to talk alone. Uh, I won't say that much. Nothing to say. <laughs> Nothing to say. Nothing to say. How, how's it going, chat? We got 39 viewers. It's a pretty good amount. Nona Square won game one. Clown nine down a game. That is one thing I really like about the Economy League is that <laughs> it's so not that separated. Like, you look at executive, you look at CEO. There are teams that are, like, starting to break away a little bit. Not massively. Are you, talk, you talking about your own team? It's only the first three games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, but you do have, like, like Frank's Little Beauty, so yes, the team I'm on, has not lost. Glue Eaters have not lost. Um Clown Nine are the in first place here in the Economy League. Had only lost one game out of their six. Now have lost uh, second. Now in seven games. Um, when you just look at the standings overall in general, like you can have any team all of a sudden be first, basically in in one week change. Everybody's within two three points. Economy's so, pretty close, yeah. Also, these games matter a lot because we only play seven weeks, and because they're all two blocks. Um, like last year, and and this is gonna be in the the captains meeting uh, coming up this Sunday. Um, like, like last year we had our tiebreaker rule: play a tiebreaker if you can. If you can't, whoever had fastest win time um, was the higher seed going into playoffs. This year we have a whole week reserved for tiebreakers, um, as well as an additional secondary rule, uh, which is basically hidden so that you're pressured to play because you don't know whether or not you're going to take it, um, because we don't want people basically like. Oh, we had the faster game. Why risk it? Why play that third tiebreaker game? Um, so it is going to be a hidden rule for who advances if you can't schedule it. Um, 
That being said, like this game super matters for Clown Nine if they're looking to at least get the buy. Like those first two teams get a buy. Um, so I think you're going to see them get a little amped. I don't think Clown Nine has lost their first game of a series yet, so I think they're gonna they're gonna pull out the big guns this game. I don't know what those guns are, and I I won't release them, but I'm expecting guns. At least one of their characters to have a gun. Naughty on his way back, just getting food. Everybody is in lobby. It looks like everybody is in order. Let's see. I'm going to remind everyone is not D4 in solo duo. He is D4 in TFT. So if you're looking for someone to teach you TFT, uh, let's see is your man. I'd like to imagine that you're casting through your phone, though. Me? Does it actually sound that bad? No, I just like to imagine that you're doing it. <laughs> I don't know why. I just like the idea of maybe like you're in the passenger seat of your car, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just sitting in a grocery store parking lot right <laughs> now. Uh, and you're just like, just kind of going off, riffing off whatever I say, and being like, yeah, oh, close, Varys almost got him. Uh. Without really knowing what I'm talking I, I'm about. I'm pretty far away from my mic. It's, I have like a, I think I have a pretty good mic, but I keep it, you know, like like more than an arm's length away on my desk. So that's probably why it doesn't sound very good. And it looks like they both teams are going to be ready in just a second. And we will get the link to pop up onto the screen. Um, or I'm expecting massive draft changes from both teams. I know you're expecting at least band changes from the side of my no-no square. Expecting a pipe ban, probably. Don't think they'd want to see it again. What else are you expecting from the side of my Nono Square? What was their last draft? Let's see. I mean, maybe they'll ban Zed. I don't know. Or maybe they... I'm not really sure how they'll uh, change the bans up, really. Maybe they'll play a real AD carry instead of Ziggs. Yeah, uh, mighty support. Did TSM wondered? Yes. The answer is probably um, because Clown Nine lost. So I'm gonna go with if you're playing off of that, then yes. The team that wasn't Clown Nine won. I'm gonna give you a massive uh, little hint about me, N7. Hmm. I'm really tired right now. It's pretty late over there, huh? Uh, well, it's not you crazy. Easterners. I know I'm an Easterner. It's only nine. Like I'm not like I'm not a grandpa yet. I'm not Yo Daddy's daddy yet. Uh, shout out to Yo Daddy's daddy on Joe Exotics. Um, but why is he old or something? No, he's just he's a grandpa because he's Yo Daddy's daddy, which would be your grandpa, right? Ah, yeah, that's the that's the one two buckle my shoe three four. He's older than you. All right, this is the link. I'm going to put it up on the screen, and we are going to be going over to it in just a minute. Um, you have access to that link, right, N7? Yeah, I'm watching. Cool. We're going to transition over to that screen right now. As it looks like the teams are readying up and about to begin the draft. I'm expecting a Zach ban, <laughs> I think. That was the most detrimental Part of the comp is that Zach kept coming in and starting the engages and basically blocking things out. You might see Zed banned. You might just see an adaptation, like picking something that Zed really isn't good into or something that can do what he does. Um, they might be might be afraid of it enough to, to get rid of it. I would like to see my no-no square. I know it's tempting to do the exact same thing when you win a game, like let's do the same bands. I don't think they need to this game. I think they can sacrifice one of their bands um, and maybe put it on the pike. It's the same so far. Or remember it when you get down to, like, they banned out Leona Nautilus last game and uh, in the second round. Like, throw a pike. They didn't like that. They didn't like that, Maokai. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Galio still up for both teams. I know it's a pretty hotly contested pick for both teams. Uh, they are going to look at it to ban the orange. So they're going to ban out top a lot. 
here. Play maybe they might change up their style. Play a lot more top focused, a lot more top centric. Um, you are on the blue side, so you have the open pit into the herald. Maybe you play around those a little bit better in the early game. That's the pike. They're gonna they're gonna do the pike ban instead. They're gonna first pick the echo here. I'm expecting Galio to be taken on the side of Cloud Nine. It's up. Both teams like it. It's technically a takeaway from them. I think that Echo is, by the way, in the jungle for No-No Square, but I'm not 100% sure because I we did just see this guy play Zed mid, so he clearly plays his fair share of assassins or at least assassin-y like people. Like Echo is like a mage assassin. He's not a hardcore assassin, but... There's the Galio. It is locked in. They're thinking about their next pick here. I don't think you have to do anything crazy. Yeah, I was going to say take the jungler here early. The cane is a good takeaway. It might force him back onto the Zac, though. I'm not sure if you actually want him to have that. Um, if they don't take jungler, I think you see that become a ban. As Blitzcrank is locked in with Morgana up. Sorry. Yeah, Blitz Jinx. Be an interesting bot lane. So I'm going to say that Jinx is... DJ Dice was like, please let me be more involved in this game. He just played Varus and was poking. His ults didn't really connect the way they had been. When he's on these global alt champions, he really is like a heat-seeking missile every single time. Yeah, his ult definitely has a lot more range, but I think Jinx has way less agency than Varus. I think they should have just taken the Varus because Varus is very good in the Caitlyn, in my opinion. It is going to be Piltover's finest there in the bot lane, as you just touched upon. Um, the Zed is going to get banned out now. I think to, that Echo pick is really strong because now you're forcing these specific bans. I think Zed, Zac are what they're going to ban. You have to ban one of each because it's such a solid flex. Um, you don't really know for sure where it's going to go. Now they're going to take away the Orn here. No ornaments. No ornaments. And Fiora's taken away, so Zack is still on the table. The real secret agent says, Won't never let me play Yasuo. Ah. Couldn't agree more. They won't let you play it. Ha ha. They're going to take Nautilus this time. So hook for hook, pilt over for pilt over. Kind of a mirror matchup almost in the bot lane as you just see pilt over and hooks coming down. It's all about execution down there now. Although you can't really hook Nautilus in and Caitlyn is so ranged that... Although you can bait you can bait uh, Caitlyn to hook you if you step on a trap. It's with the new blitz changes. The range. The yeah. range <laughs> is enough to kind of bait it, yeah. Nasus again, so they're just gonna go right back to it. I mean, they took away the Fiora, they took away the Garen. Okay, I'll play Nasus. I can farm, I can be huge late game. I think you need to pick something on Clown 9 that abuses it, and I think you need to shut that pick down as Aurelia is being hovered here for the mid lane. Aurelia, pretty good in Galio. I played Galio in the Aurelia and I got destroyed. I don't know if that's because I'm bad at Galio it's or probably what. Probably because but you're bad at Galio. Probably yeah. that, but. Yeah. From my experience, it's a good matchup. No, I think I think it is really smart to give this uh, guy who popped off last game a a like substantial power pick in the sense of the micro ability. Like the micro ability of a Aurelia lets you have that. Like, okay, you outplayed last game a lot. You had a lot of good turns. Um, you picked up some kills where it looked like you were just gonna die. Some one for ones early. Okay, we're gonna need somebody who also just dashes around a shit ton, uh, does what they need to do, and. Um, can can start to carry the game if they get a lead. The one thing is, Aurelia doesn't come online the same way Zed does. Like, Zed, when you hit level 6, even if you have no items, is just outrageously strong. Like, you can 1v1 most people in the game on it that aren't full tanks. So, Aurelia, you do need the items before you start to get crazy. Right, and that's a pretty good game for King. Like, that's a pretty good team for... 
cane to evolve red into get really scrappy with it and evolve life steal. Yeah, you can see him get some of those items like the black cleaver, like the um, death dance. Be really hard to kill. Be fast moving. Have a lot of uh, life steal, especially if he takes a conqueror and everything. Um, you can do a very team fighty build for his team here. Yeah, very front to back on both teams, except for the Echo, I guess. I do but, like uh, the Caitlyn pickup. I like that they're going to play in ADC this game. I think that is beneficial to them. I think last game they didn't have something to play around. They played around the Ziggs a little bit. They had some good, like, J4 into Zig ults. But it, now you have something to actually kite for. That late game can absolutely just shred teams. Yeah, maybe they'll just be more comfortable in the Caitlyn. I don't know how practiced they are on the Ziggs, but I know a good Caitlyn can be really, really annoying, especially in the low range ADC like Jinx is. So Yeah, it's, and just the oppressiveness early game. The one thing is you don't want to bait yourself into tower range against Blitz um, early on. You want to make sure you're bouncing waves if you are able to do anything with like getting level 2 first. Um, I think, again... This game, not so much. Like last game, we kind of talked about if it's even-ish gold at 20 minutes, it goes to my no-no square. This game is totally different. Um, I think the Yorick Nasus lane is going to be very interesting. I think Yorick actually provides much stronger mid-game split push um, in like a super substantial way. If you don't go behind on Yorick, your ultimate on Yorick is so, so big. You can drop it down and then teleport to fights. Um, you can be super influential and take turrets faster than Nasus can before he starts getting like these 400, 500 stacks. So uh, definitely something to watch. The other thing too is Galio has uh, really good, we saw good roams early on from Pantheon before he got set behind. Again, we can see them from Galio. So same yeah. kind of global presence on someone you don't know. Yeah, I think what's uh, no Square's on the left, right? I think Nodos Square is pretty crazy scaling on their team. So I think if they don't fall too far behind or if they don't find themselves in like a really bad position, their team will scale harder than... Uh, yeah, I mean, Echo, Bomber. Aurelia, Jinx, Nasus. I mean, Blitzcrank is the only person who doesn't scale, right? Like, Blitzcrank is still good. He's still fine. He, he doesn't need to scale. He, right. he, he gives them that pressure bit. early mid. And also the team fight pressure of, hey, can I hook Caitlyn at any point? Can I end this game early for us? You know, can I basically make it a 4v5 where they don't have a lot of damage? Because once Caitlyn's out of the fight, you know, Galio and Kane have to be on top of you to deal the damage, and that's something Nasus wants. So, I think, again, this game's going to be based a lot around those team fights around Dragon. Um, hopefully, I don't get struck by lightning. It does seem to be uh, still right above my home. And three more minutes until the game starts. Okay, if you guys want to call in, uh, we're taking call-ins here in the community at the LBLCS. Just hop into the Discord, hop into community, write your haikus about each comp, and we're going to pull you on up and on in. Uh, don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Unless, of course, you're both of those things, in which huh. case it's all right. Nobody this time. Nobody. Not a, not a soul. I got some great seltzer right here. I'm gonna do a little, I'll do a little ASMR thing. Like I can do like a. What's your favorite seltzer? My favorite seltzer? Yeah, there's like 20 different types now. There's like Corona seltzer, Bud Light seltzer. Uh, uh okay. Uh, my girlfriend really likes Trulies. I've not had that. It's like uh, it's like it's similar to White Claw in the sense that like it's a brand that just does seltzer. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if we have it out here out west, but yeah. You might. You might, and you just might not know. Uh, you have White Claw, right? Oh, yeah. I'll have to go to Bev Moe and check it out. It could out. just be an eastern White Claw, like an eastern United States White Claw. I don't really look in the alcoholic department that often, so you might even have it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking White Claws, though, I mean, Evding just wrote a whole script on them. Actually, you know what? That's something that we'll post in here someday. Evding is <laughs> one day drank like yeah, he 16 did the ultimate. white claws and rated every flavor of them or whatever. Hey, now he has to compare brands of seltzers. That's they're all like, has, yeah. all like the same thing, right? So yeah. he has to break down the intricacies. 
So I will tell you, uh, as we only have a minute left, and since we're just rambling about alcoholic beverages, one of the reasons my girlfriend likes Trulies uh, and like those seltzery drinks is because she has type 1 diabetes. So drinking things that don't have carbs doesn't make her blood sugar go up. Huh. So that's one of like that's a huge hit for the a strange niche market in the United States of diabetics who want to drink <laughs> but are like nervous too because like beer is a bunch of carbs and wine is a bunch of sugars so there you go now you know fun facts seltzer's the drink to go to 30 seconds guys give me a long ass 30 seconds because i'm tired as shit uh, you know how much of a talker like you're an information guy that like stays kind of you know what you remind me of hmm. you are a good ADC and I think this is an attribute of good ADC is, is you don't over talk uh, I know this because 28th February or Marksman V4 used to be on my team the man said very few words but he was right to the point <laughs> yeah I don't know I'm just I'm just coming here to help out, have a good time. Hey, that's You're more seasoned about. in this than I am, clearly. So Yeah, uh, we are going to go right into the game. I'm going to let everybody know. I'm going to try to fix what's going on above real quick. Hang on. There's a little bit of an error here. Ooh. <laughs> There's a very funny error on the screen. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> wow. I'm going to fix it. Hang on. Listen, I was distracted by the alcoholic beverages talk. I'm going to fix it in time. Maybe. Like, this is a hard maybe. Fix it in time for what? I already see it. Quiet, quiet. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> in time for the game, in time for the game. Oh, son of a bitch, I didn't. I hear it loaded in. <laughs> Alright, it's going to be in a weird spot. But it's... Better, it's better. I did, I did swap it. Alright. Did you? I, don't I did, it. it's going to take a second. Say like 30 seconds for you to see the swap. If I did mess those up, I don't want to talk about it. If you're watching this on YouTube, screw you. Sorry, I messed up, man. I don't really mean that if you're watching this on YouTube. If you didn't know, you could watch these on YouTube, but it takes about two days for us to transfer them over because uh, they're pretty big files. But this will be on YouTube in about two days if you ever want to watch your games back. The link to our YouTube is down below underneath this Twitch channel. It says uh, LBLCS YouTube. And here we go. An invade strat is spotted out by the secret Asian. And quickly abandoned by Clown 9. Oh, well, that is one of my more favorite ways to invade. You go up the mid and you tuck into that bush. And you do that invade every time? No. No, you can watch all my games. It's a new invade every time. I know you think we can't do 14 <laughs> new invades, but we will. Realistically, you only have to think of like seven new invades because... Yeah, if you guys don't go into the dragon pit and all flash over the wall on us, I'll you're, be pretty disappointed. Yeah, well, you know, just don't face us in the finals is all I'm saying, because that's our <laughs> plan against you. <laughs> it's not even going to be to get kills. It's going to be strictly like a Mao reward dance where it's just like, we are tougher than you. <laughs> Hear us roar. We're going to flash over the pit. We're going to get ban restrictions because we're going to spam masteries, and then we're all back together. <laughs> Red start for King. Oh, not King. I'm looking at the wrong champ. Okay. Red start for Echo, though, is correct. And King. King is up there in the red. Uh, looks like a bait down in the bottom. We might pan over to it soon. Oh, no, they are showing now. Okay. I thought they were sitting in the bush, like, pretending that they were leashing. They're gonna try to just all in somebody to start as. DJ Dice wouldn't fall for something like that. Come on. DJ Dice is very cautious. He's a cautious man. Some of you don't know, trading pretty effectively on a secret Asian who is popping that corrupted potion. We saw secret Asian pop off last game. We're going to see it this game. My theory says maybe. That way I'm playing both sides. Yep, it's pretty quiet early game. Farming. Full clear bot, full clear top. Kane didn't quite full clear his top side, but. So the after shot, someone, you don't, someone know, you don't know makes it. 
it's so hard for this to oh. trade effectively. But here we go, a great trade there. Really knowing when they could strike, waiting for the action shot to be done popping. Uh, and then going right back in, trading as much damage as she could. Yeah, they really had her stacks ready to go. I do expect some ganks here out of this game as well. I know you have to strip. Oh my god, something was just struck in my backyard. Lightning is very scary. Uh, another thing that could be scary is Kane early on if he is able to get some damage down onto you. Echo also has really good follow up for lanes that have good, um, like, gank setup. Like, Nasus actually has really good gank setup. Uh, and here comes way too large in the mid lane. This is just for pressure. They're not, I don't think they're trying to kill, but they might be able to. So much damage in first blood over to way too large. A great taunt from the side of someone you don't know is able to secure that one. That's why he likes that Galio pick so much. Uh, and if he's able to push this wave out, it could be really big. Although there is teleport on Aurelia, so he has to respect that. Then way too large. Just go Raptors to Krugs back. Do a pretty good back. Yeah, it's going to be a nice, juicy one. First Blood is good gold if you're in the jungle. He has 1,300 already that he's sitting on. He's sitting at like 1,600-ish by the time he backs. Then I imagine he rotate down for Drake. I would expect him to lane gank bottom, something like that. We did. We see that's a pretty popular thing in the economy league. We saw it like twice last game. Um... There are some wards there, so he would get spotted Both out. ADC is going for inspiration. Very interesting. I think this is a I am Jinx, and I am not as strong as Caitlyn is early game. And I want the health to stay in lane to get CS to be relevant. Right? I, don't, I think that's what I can see that. Me. I can see that. He's not really getting poked out, so he's doing a good job of uh, avoiding it. True. Someone you don't know is back with his Ooh, be crystal almost turned into the cooldown item. Name I for Kindle Gem? I think it's Kindle Gem. Good trade in top side. Right I, now, CS pretty even except for top. I don't want to be mean, but I just find this matchup to be very boring. <laughs> Like, yeah, most top matchups match can it. be, are, are boring, uh, but FX Daddy saying he's not boring, he's gonna go all the way in on I'm a Whale, who has already burned his flash, and he's just gonna, like, saunter on out of there. Good early flash. Yeah, knowing that he would get stunned up if he didn't. Yeah, I think Jinx is doing pretty good in the bot lane. Generally, if you have a, you're even in farm with a Caitlyn, that's a win, so, I don't know. Caitlyn's doing that good of a job of poking the EJ dice out of it. Especially since Jinx scales so much better than Caitlyn. Yeah, and this is another good play from somebody who knows. Trading pretty effectively so far on a secret Asian. Uh, way too large. You're going to spot out FX Daddy right now. It's level 5 to 6. Yes. And all is going to come out from Galio, but it's actually going to split him from Kane. As they're looking to find a kill, the Q won't connect, and are really close. just making sure close. they're safe. It was close. It was. I think that actually not ulting there would have been more beneficial to try to pinch it. And oh, yeah. way too large, I think, has his number right here, though, as he picks up oh, another man. kill. <laughs> That's a little cheeky little uh, right. way to go. I like that. Yeah, good use on this game so far. Especially well. since he was a level up, so he knew he could do something like DJ that. DJ Nola wins this with his with all of his little ghouls. Yeah, but, and he has Conqueror, yeah. And each of the ghouls props Conqueror, it's pretty pretty nuts. Yeah. So yeah, Kane has quite the lead now. What can he do with it though? He might get caught out by DJ Dice. He does have the ability to go over the wall, and they're pinging him now. But it's yeah, too late. little too late. No ult on that Jinx to clean him up either. As a teleport from Heart and Sword Garen on this Nasus does come in, which means they do have... Oh, they don't have it on DJ Nola. I was going to say they do have Dragon Pryo, but it looks like the Dragon will go over to the side of... I know no square, though. They're... Jinx is in Vision. Yeah. They know they're on it. But Kane Blitzkamp has did to... a good job of uh, keeping getting Kane really, really far away. From yeah. We're taking two three. tower shots, though. Um, 
Okay, it is gonna be a Mountain Drake next. Mountain Drake is a good solo Drake to get as well. I think Air Drake in this instance, yeah. not really crazy for either team. Yeah, I think they could've just left it. I don't think it's even worth getting. I think they knew they had Total Pryo to get it as DJ Noah now backing up from this. Giant Nasty is gonna flash, burn flash for flash. Cloud9's top laner staying safe. Keeping the dream, the dream True. alive of not dying. But think about think about it this way. So was it? Cloud9 just got a pretty, pretty big lead with their the jungle invade and that little fight. And it's a wind drake, which isn't that important of a drake. It doesn't really do that much, especially by itself. So by taking the drake, they open it up for potentially better drakes. For them to get so if you think about it that way oh no i agree you know. i think it's like a consolation prize if we spooked kane out of the jungle like yeah they could have gone for something like rift herald they could have gone for plates on tower which probably would have given them better stats later on um and not opened it up but they also might be confident that they can do that again and take the next one they did basically win um Ooh, the game the because game. they took three infernals last game so they might game is very very confident right now DJ Noah also confident going in on this Nasus, pushing him out of lane as much as he can. And a oh, flash can be caught in the same exact spot. And a nice ult is going to dodge a little bit of time, but I think he will get stunned uh, up in the end. And it's a oh, here comes the Galio ult. He is going to pop it. It's going to hit so many people on the taunt. Means that it's a triple kill, or rather that, just two, but he is going to go down. And there's the Jinx rocket I was talking about. It. The man is an American sniper down there in the bot lane. I'm a whale, will get caught out here and go over to Garen. So, so the far, Jinx get excited. I Jinx get excited. Jinx excited, but it's Looks like they got to split go a little on bit. to Caitlyn. I think Caitlyn was coming in from the side there and it was spotted out. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication there. I think if they stay on the same target, might have got Galio. DJ Nola doing what Yorick does, split pushing very effectively. Taking two plates for himself. Good snipe though from it looked like it looked a little dicey. It's a nice hit. It, it you know it puts it shut down gold onto Jinx too, which is what you need. Like you need in this instance with these team comps, the faster my no no square comes online, gets the gold, the faster the game can turn on its head. Like right now, oh they might be able to catch a nice flash, but he's gonna keep him alive. Flashing out of the hook there. Um, yep, you walk up without your support and blitz swims run at you. I think the faster Jinx and Aurelia and Echo can come online, the faster uh, they can start to pressure some of these objectives back. Zena's secretly flashing that bush, but I think they saw that. Wait, what happened? He hex flashed into a bush. Oh, he uh, naughty hex Nicky flashed. Flashed. He baited out the taunt. Yeah, the Conqueror stacking. Um, it's gnarly. He is so big. He can definitely fight that, I think. He's choosing not to. I think he doesn't have the heal cut. They spotted cutting. him doing Rift. Level leads in. Yeah, but FX Daddy does have his ultimate. I think he's going to pop it as the ult comes out. He is. The damage Aurelius doesn't get dropped on way too large. It really is right here. He's trying to go over the wall, yes. but he can't. There's a Q to get over the side. He's gone right into the team, and someone you don't know is trying to pick up some damage onto them, but unable. They know it's a 2v1 Ooh. in the bot lane now. You might see a little them pressure that. He knew the Aurelia was roaming, and they had the roam, so that was just a little disrespect coming from way too large. They're going to drop it in the mid lane. Try to do as much as they can. They need some They're going to look to dive this. They I might just it. try and take it. Up. I think they get the full tower. I think it's a one and done kind of scenario. I don't think they can stick around. Tower is pretty tanky. But he is in there. There's no Herald. He's going to go and try to taunt under tower here. He's going to get it onto Blitzcrank. That's the first thing he wanted to get oh, it on. It's going to be enough damage to finish yeah. him off. He's able yeah, to hold the tower. The tower. The tower gets pretty tanky at the last little plate, so. Couldn't quite pick it up. And this is a good Drake for them to get. A lot, a lot of the damage from the side of my no, no Square is physical. Yes, you have Echo, but basically, you know, your three big, big people late game are going to be ADC. As 
as he's looking to pick up another Ooh, kill. He has his ult. Echo had his ult. I don't know why he didn't. I don't know if it was a it. mana issue. Maybe. I did not see. I know he was he was lower on it. Now it's just starting to get the better of these trades, especially with the kills he picked up. Yeah, he got pretty good the there. Oh, Jinx ult. Uh, maybe just check. Yeah, it was Jinx ult, yeah. We were just seeing if they were on it. So this is what I'm talking about. They took the cloud and now they get a... Because of their advantage, they get a... And it is going to uh, be Ocean. So either team could get three Ocean Drakes and Soul. And honestly, Ocean Soul, in my opinion, is the best one. Um, for sure. Just the strongest. Gives you the most ability to fight. They need Both teams need heal cutting. And they probably need it soon. Uh, Aurelia Echo Nasus. Heal a launch. Uh, Kane, when he gets when he is able to go into that red cane, if he gets death dance, is going to heal a crap ton. And Yorick already, we've seen how much like, that stacking from the conqueror is. That is way too large. He's gonna try to fight this. Here comes Galia with the ultimate, a flash away from Heart and Sword might keep him alive for a little bit longer. That secret agent is coming in, but to no avail. Oh, a nice ultimate here, but he gets stunned oh. up. The taunt, it's gonna be a two for zero. Although that secret agent trying to make me eat my words, Woo. and he does. So far, a one for Did one. The man out? might he be all the way out. He can cue a minion. Not quite. DJ Nola picking up the kill there. Man. Yeah, I don't know quite why Nasus is in the red side jungle there. FX Daddy. Gonna back out there. I think First Tower is gonna go over to the side of. Clown 9, but they are getting collapsed on. They might just have to back out here. Those minions might be able to take it, though. Yeah. Gold is in the favor now with that with that tower gone of Clown 9, but like for 15 minutes, 2k isn't crazy. It's still absolutely anybody's game here, especially with uh, the scaling comp and being yeah. the team that's behind. I mean, a lot of it is on Kane. So, like, bot is more or less even, sport more or less even. Mid it does have yeah. 600 in favor of Galio, but top favor of Nasus is pretty much all Kane. Yeah, Kane is up, like, t he is the 2k up. Like, <laughs> he is 2k up on this echo. Yeah, Jinx is closing in on her. Infinity Edge. She bought a Kirti Star. I guess. No. Maybe an accident. Maybe had the gold or something. I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't really give her too much. Like you could maybe buy the dagger and be fine, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of, uh, oh. Good. Uh, good cue. Slide and glide out of there. The bot lane is roaming up, but it's spotted out pretty easily. You start to ping it. I think that Clown 9 needs to be pretty proactive here. They need to continue to play around objectives and find what they can. Yeah. Uh, they have they, a pretty big lead in the jungle. If they peter out here, like they just traded mid tower, that was going to go down. That was at like one health or whatever. Um, but if they peter out here and they t stay too stagnant, you give my no no square this window back into the game kind of. Yeah. They definitely should be playing aggressive on like cooldown because the Galley ult is up. All their ults are up. Yeah, so they can be, be looking. They could definitely be like pressuring the towers by actually like diving and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And this echo is pretty far behind realistically just like in terms of total gold across the board. Um, I'd be trying to continue to punish him. Instead, they are looking top. They're gonna maybe try to make some type of play on Nasus. Looks like they're just clearing out wards, though. They know they can't go in. Looks like they're trying to make some bot. Yeah, she has her Infinity Edge, so Jinx is a pretty, pretty good spike for her. A oh. nice flash nice hook flash. from Naughty Nicknames means Utsi is gonna go Kaputsi. He goes down yeah. six to nine, goes the score, and they they're gonna continue to pressure. Oh. Here comes Galio. Galio. He's going in a nice ult from Echo, keeps him safe. They're able to burn a flash. And they should be able to pick up the next. Let's see. Drake comes up 45 seconds. They might should be able to get. Harold is up right now though, and they do know Echo is bot lane, so I think they're gonna trade for. I think they could have got the tower. Definitely. I don't think they all need to come here. 
it, with Aurelia shoving mid the way she was, yes, because either Galio stays bottom and makes sure they can't take it, or he goes middle and you can take it. And if he stays, maybe Aurelia can put a lot of pressure on that. Like, once you get tier 2 mid, you have so much control over the map. Yeah, they definitely, they're gonna go for the Drake, which is what they should Kane be doing. is roaming down. They have Ash Herald says on TP. him. York does not have TP. It might be up. Oh, Yorick oh, does oh. have all, but I'm a whale goes down yeah. in the river. They're just trying to push swim. mid to get something out of it. Yep, uh, they're just trying to get a little bit of a trade. They are. They're going to shove middle with that Rift Herald. They might be able to get the whole tower. As Jinx is the first one to roam they're over. Jinx behind. They might be a little bit alone. They are able to pick up the tower. So a nice use of... Okay, we, we have all the right, Nasus. I think Nasus should have been rotating down. He's a little late. He was caught in a little bit of a top lane skirmish. It might still work out. He there is he in is. that hole. He will almost one shot the ADC. They're trying to kite yeah, away. So caught. much oh, damage. They're going to be able to take on a DJ Dice, oh, maybe. Man. That's one for wow, zero Galio. so far. Good CC on the side of play. Clown 9, but it's going to be a, a long lost fight, I think. Even with Kane skating around, Yorick's here trying to do what he can. A good ult that's going to keep alive a little bit longer and separate the team as FX Daddy now is basically running for his life. He get walled off here. A good amount of Q damage, and this is a scrappy fight at 7. A lot of damage oh, yeah. onto Aurelia. She's almost all oh. the way down. No more mana on the side of Heart and Sword. Garen is Aurelia trying to pick up a kill. I think she will be able to do it. I don't think she can pick up two, but I... I he has the... He has conquered. Oh. Uh... All right, that yeah, was, if Galio didn't assassinate Jinx there, it would have been all over, I think. Uh, Cloud nine. I, I don't know what that was a trade for. Like I don't. <laughs> I don't know. It if was, it was fight a four fight. For four. It was a long fight. I don't know. It, it, the gold is even. That's all that matters. But yeah, if Galio didn't manage to kill Jinx there, I think Jinx would have just cleaned up easy. They're all really low. Yeah, Jinx a little bit too up front, a little bit front line, and good turn from Honest Cloud9 looked to be in a bit of a pickle. Good repositioning from Caitlyn to get back with the team. Good use of the Galio ult to split them again mid-fight. Um, there is no major objective up on the bot side of the map. Um, so, interesting to see how many people are allocated down there. Is they're going to maybe walk back up with farming. more ult in the top lane. Looks like Jinx should just be able to get solo gold in this tower. She's sitting on a lot of gold. She'll probably almost get her. I think she must be going for her rapid fire cannon. On enemy champions right now. She could have gotten that bot lane tower. I think, but she didn't know how safe it was. They had wards, so I think they, she could have gone for it. Yeah, he had wards, but they didn't have vision of the enemy team. Sure, sure. Bramble Vest on both the top laners now. It's way too large. He's catching out that creation. A good time stun to match his own as he dodges a lot of damage with his ultimate. He's able to basically solo kill yeah. right there. Galio ulting at the last second, I think, just for the assist. Uh, Jinx ult for, for fun, I guess. Trying to keep Down him on bot. tower for longer. It's way too large. <laughs> Skating around. Oh, oh, stole that blue. I think he could have smited it. It was up. I don't think he expected it to go so low without it dying there. It was like a thousand to only a hundred. As they shove in, I think they're going to rotate down here. DJ Dice all yeah, alone. Jinx is uh, he looks that's what That's what I mean by a tower diving. I like, guess what they should have been doing 10 minutes earlier. Mm -hmm. I, DJ it Dice, now. it's all. I love you, DJ Dice, but you're not living through this one, big dog. It's gonna be at least one. If not, they can kill here. whoever's here too. Oh, you oh, might be they, left their, they left their ADC out to dry. Oh, oh he dodges the ult, dodges the stun, and all of a sudden, the secret agent is uncovered and taken down. Yeah, just the TP was unnecessary. I think you just say, "Sorry, Jinx, you're." You're dead. You're dead. A nice pull into tower. Oh, right. Too large. He's gonna take aggro for a moment, but Kane's a slippery guy. He's gonna walk right back out. Yorick is still splitting top. They have yeah. the numbers. Two are still dead. They're gonna get two towers. 
Jinx needs to get some, uh, what's the word, grievous wounds for this Kane. Kane and Yorick, if, if she ever starts fighting them too. I mean, Galio is starting to go a lot tankier. We see the, the second completed item on him is the Frozen Heart, so really strong against Aurelia. Um, pretty decent against people like Nasus and Echo and Jinx as well. Echo's like taking the red. Interesting. There's gonna be a fight over this dragon for sure. I think she'll be given the red to Jinx. I think so too. I agree with that. Uh, I think they are gonna have a fight over this dragon as well. Someone you don't know is level 14. Uh, it's two the levels top up. Top CPs are down. Oh, way so too the 4 oh. He needs to find the ultimate he, draw oh, time. Faster. This is actually this big. This is really big. Are they able to yep. pick up anyone else? That secret agent doesn't go down. It is still alive. There's the, there's the blitz scaling. You just hook a good target and uh, yep. you change the dynamic of the play. DJ Nola needs to be able to solo him. Or yeah, this is just the third Drake going over the side of my no-no square. They're going to yeah. ult for fun. Get a little damage. Definitely shouldn't be happening with the lead Kane has. No, just like, again, like that, he's getting way too large for his own bridges kind of thing. Like, he, his little <laughs> overzealous, little out of position, just like feeling aggressive. It's okay to feel aggressive, but you need to still play smart. And a good hook, though, from Blitz. Yeah, that Blitz was the, uh, I was, they didn't get that hook there. I think the Drake goes over to Kana. And I don't think you go in on them if you don't land a hook on somebody big. And finish them off. Like, if Kane had stalled... Can you alt Kane if you're Galio? I think yeah. Uh, you, I think you can if you click over the portrait. Right, so that would give basically the out. Like he could be able to get out and start to heal up again. Yeah, I think they just DC chained him well enough that he wasn't able to do anything. Let's take a look at the gold too. We do see that it's three thousand ahead for the side of Clown Nine. Um, pretty even in the bot lane. Both the ADCs at. Uh, 8,200. It looks like yep. the the massive lead again is still in the the jungle. Looks like I don't know what the I, I thought he was going for rapid fire can first on Jinx, but I don't know if he's pivoting to something else. You might be going to the Phantom now, trying not to get blown up. I'm not sure. Maybe it was just a misclick. Could have been. Oh. And speaking of misplaced, way too large. Luckily, he gets a Galio to click the ultimate on him as he's trying to deal out enough Jinx. damage to kill DJ Dice, and he does. That Jinx secret agent's gonna be the next target to go down. That's a two yeah. for zero. Cloud9 focusing five targets. 5v3, yeah. yeah. On Baron. They didn't have any of their frontliners there. They didn't have Nasus or Blitzcrank, so. Bit pushed up. DJ Nolan, I'm a whaler, just on interference duty. Go back to burst it down. Echo has my yep. available. They don't have TP on Nasus, so it's 2v5 right now. I, I think you just give and you try to stop their back so Nasus yeah. can take ten. Jinx might just ult the second she spawns. I think it's going to be gone by that time, and it is. Yeah. Nasus is probably going to pick up the tower, though. Yeah. Yeah, pretty big lead for Clown Nine now. They play it pretty good. They well. need they need to use this Baron. We've seen a lot of teams in economy and even in executive um, take Baron and then not be able to do something effective with it. Like Baron is nerfed a little bit this season. It has a smaller uh, timer on it. Like as soon as you get it, it's only like a minute and a half for first Baron. So they need to make sure they're doing things with it, trying to pressure, look at least for an inhib, yeah. uh, either mid or bottom here. If you could get top, that's the dream, because then you can split and play for the dragons and deny that right. soul. But Looks like he sold the Kirchi shard for Executioner's Calling. Yeah, I think it was a misclick. I think maybe, I think you should just could have kept it and not sold it at that point. So you would probably get a rapid fire cannon at some point. Probably, but also if he, if he had to sell it to get the gold for the Heal cutting. Yeah, so Jinx's gonna have to do her best to stay alive and get the Beavis wounds on everybody. She does have Rune Ann, so it will be easier to proc it on people, especially if she's on her rockets. That's, that's the pop off item. But right, right here, there. this is the best prank of all time as they're looking to catch a kill onto FX Daddy. Dario, unable. Yeah, they're gonna force him to come back in unless DJ Dice blocks it. 
Good use of the I don't body. think he needed to flash, he was just scared, but... I think he flashed so to make sure the Caitlyn ult was behind somebody, too. He was, he was close enough, though, but I think he was just scared. That's fine. It's fine to be Jinx. scared, he didn't go down. Jinx Someone doing damage. Know. They are Dallas. sieging really well here, a nice going all in. Finding a lot of damage out of the carries in the back line. can pop off here. Is he needs the reset, they need one. It's a two for one so far. Cloud9 getting way ahead, way too large, making too much tower shot. Ooh, man. So close. I think Jinx is playing a little too scared there. I think if she went in and just kept auto attacking, she might have made something happen. Yeah, she yeah. continued to, to sidestep and go. I think they can take more. I think they're playing. Oh, Nasus is alive in there. They're, they're going to rotate the dragon. I, I didn't see the, Nasus, Baron, uh, the dragon. Ocean Drake. I was gonna say, if Nasus isn't alive there, I think you can just take the, you can end the game, but Nasus is pretty, pretty big and hard to melt. The Thorn Mail, he's going for a dead man's next. Right, so this Drake should just go over to Clown 9 unless something crazy happens. Um, I mean, Blitzcrank could hook somebody again. True, but I think it, they're gonna burst it down. They're gonna just show up with Galio's ult, but he's out of position a little bit. He needs to get over this Galio didn't have his ult, he used it earlier. They are That's gonna be able to get it. So they deny Soul, keeping them in the game a lot longer here, using the last moments of their Baron to back with it. This is a tense one. Yeah, they're trying. I think because they have so much pressure now, and because they have a lot of pick potential on people like Galio Kane, Nautilus, um, I think they should be able to catch somebody out and basically take another inhib and then suffocate my no-no square. But, you know, Naughty Nicknames looking pretty good on this Blitzcrank. If they get Jinx one more item, it could be a different story too. Yeah, no objectives up, so it's just uh, it's just catching waves. Asses down bot, getting the uh, super stacks. Yep, it's where you gotta throw him, but now you have to have someone to deal with this Yorick, and Nasus really was the person to deal with. Like, Nasus was big enough now to deal with him. Um, Yorick is actually a really meaty target, hard to kill. Ninja Tabai, Sterix with a Thorn Mail. Uh, you basically need Echo and somebody else up there. Maybe Aurelia can cut through him. She does have the Blade of the Ruin King and the Wit's End. Yeah, you gotta be careful. The uh, Maiden's sucking him dry here. Oh, uh, big, nice buffer on Valier, actually. Full time. He's just standing there because he knows he's uh, three levels up and will just kill her. Yeah, I mean, the ult is basically just killing her. Look at this. Melting and the corrupting potion still having that with the all ticks are right, that's so much extra damage. Yeah, she is not high enough level to face this. No, and I didn't realize how a much nice taunt down, really might be was. enough damage. They're gonna trade FX Daddy for uh, no one as Nautilus gets out with a little bit think, of life. I think Jinx steps up a little bit more there. Just being a little too scared. They do get a tower in the process, but they don't get anything major, like they have the inhib down. The jungler. Yeah, the jungler for 30 seconds. He's going to be up in time to pro the, to contest this Baron here. Uh, so they need to find another way into the base a little bit, I think. They need to get a lead and push it a little more. Yeah. I think they're just waiting for Baron before they try and go to the end. The mortal reminder. Trying to eat through some of the more tanky guys. Mm -hmm. Make sure she can cut down people like Yorick healing and like Kane healing. I tell you what though, if Nasus decides to join and they have Yorick split into the bot lane here, supers and uh, Yorick yeah. can really just melt towers, so. If Blitz lands out a good hook, it also change things. This game is, it's 11 to 20, but it is, you know, it's 32 minutes, 5K. It's not a lot different for 32 minutes. I mean, it's a clear lead, like they have item leads in a lot of the lanes, but. They got bot pushing. One, one they, miss. They know it too. 
one misstep means a lot, and DJ Dice having to flash to cover for his own misstep there. As supers are beginning to crash. They're looking for some damage onto FX Daddy, at least zone him away from the Baron. They've done it, they've pushed him back into their base, and they're gonna set their eyes for Baron. Yeah. They're gonna try and uh, come back, but their vision all set up. Shouldn't be very surprised. Insults, a little early. Sorry, DJ Dice, not two weeks in a row, although it would have been amazing if you did it. They are able to catch Aurelia a little bit of damage onto her, so follow up to see come come through, but here comes Galio. They're going all in onto the Jinx, it's who gets separated really, far, really far away from the team. Way too large, might be too deep. A nice Ooh. talk from Galio keeps his teammate Jinx alive a little bit longer. Jinx excited, she's running away though. Caitlyn needs to get into this fight. She needs to do damage. She's getting chunked oh, down in a huge ult from Aurelia. Means this whole fight could turn on its head. Galio and Yorick now retreating. Running for the hills. He is able to trade one. So it is a two for three in the end. Which is not the end of the world. But it Great does mean up, soul, I think, for my no-no square. Yeah, the game isn't going to be up in time. So they should get it. Echo is dead, though. Yeah, but they have... They have Nasus Q. They have Nasus Q, yeah. which in my this, that's like the next closest thing to a smite here. Like look at that. That's like a thousand damage. Jinx is rushing GA. I think she needs more I think she needs to go more crit to be honest. Uh, I think she needs a, a QSS. Or a QSS. She's not really getting caught with CC abilities. But if she does, like the taunt point. if she gets caught from the taunt from Galio and anybody chains it, it is like her life. She can get out of that. I think even with QSS, you're dead in that scenario. Maybe. But yeah, they're just gonna wait out Baron. They do have Soul, which is pretty pretty nuts to have. So that's a pretty big advantage. There's a big gold advantage, but I think the Soul might just even it out. Uh, they have Baron on enough members to make it maybe I count here. I think it's also on Galio, who's the one splitting now. So they're basically looking to be like, okay, we can pressure. We don't even want to really fight. We want to take tower. I think Nasus can kill Galio. I think Nasus can kill anyone if he gets three Qs on them. It's like they're trying to collapse here. They're just, they're just sieging. They're sieging. They're backing up. They're playing with what they have. Yeah. Galio's pushing in right now. He's gonna force somebody to come over. They're waiting for their window of opportunity. Galio's in alt range. Their window of opportunity is when. Their macro from my no no square drops, and they can go in on it. If it doesn't oh, drop, then they can't pick like onto way too large. Here comes the Galio, although it's a lot of damage that's gonna come down. They smack down on Aurelia in way too large. Looks like he's able to use it. I think they're able to trade the jungler at least for some of these people. Right, Jinx, get in there. Jinx, get in there. Galio is still alive. This Jinx Nasus is, is huge. Off. Jinx starting to become really big. They're trying to do as much damage as they can. DJ Nolan doing they a good job a zoning. Healing. Someone you don't know goes a little crazy, is unable to secure anything for his team. Can can Yorick do this? Oh, a lot yeah, of damage. Better, oh my auto. god. Oh, she, yeah. <laughs> she need to auto those things quick. All right, we're back to top lane. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, he is... Uh... <laughs> He might be a wet enough noodle to actually slap where it hurts, and he I, is. He had to fight back to DJ Nola position. has a few seconds where nobody is alive. He wants to end this game. He's saying, I think I can end this game. I'm doing yeah. my best to end it. I think it's all over. Game two oh, goes to Clown 9, and the series goes that to 1-1. One one. I think Jinx is playing a little too safe. Though. I think she should have just went for it. That's like the game right there. Really good showing from both teams, unfortunately. The one and one team cannot escape the curse they didn't even know they had until week four. That's four draws now for my no no square. Uh, really? Wow. Good show. Good games. Well played on both sides. Um. All right, we're looking at a a, a interview list night, uh, mostly because. Uh, it's a crazy thunderstorm, and I actually really want to turn my computer off now that I'm getting nervous. Um, however, really good showing. The the standings will be updated uh, very soon, so that's a draw for both of these teams. Clown9 still going to be in first, still going to be 
unable to be surpassed. I think Doug Dimadome is the only team that can tie them if they're able to achieve a win over their opponents this week. Um, and Seven, thanks so much for joining me. Guys, this is the LBLCS. If you want to join, get a piece of the action, feel free to drop, uh, click the link down below, drop on down <laughs> in your channel. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel where all of these casts will go. And as N7 famously coined the phrase, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, just say something, it'll sound cool. GG. GG, baby. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. I think we have three games going to be cast. We're going to be casting from like 3 p.m. until like, I don't know, when your dad goes to sleep. So make sure you tune in. Good night, guys.